to me, sucker. I'm not going to look at that. No way. <laughs> I don't want to see that. That's bad. That's scary. Welcome back. And we have Tim Alexander joining us. Europebusiness.blogspot.com. And it's one S business with one S. Uh, Tim, there's a lot of stories, so let's get rocking and rolling here. We have the inauguration speech, uh, or the uh, State of the Union speech. As uh, Dr. Bob Thiel just mentioned in the last hour, the uh, state of the apocalypse uh, anybody who doesn't believe that we are in the end times is a viciously ignorant person, and they 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 won't read. They will spit and 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 say uh, all kinds of nasty comments to those people like us. And by the way, it happens to anybody who's in the truth movement. Your friends, your relatives, your neighbors, your business partners—they'll all look at you like you've got two heads if you just read. You don't even have to kind of use it in your imagination. It's all in such black and white terms. You can read, for example, the inauguration, the uh, State of Union speech by the Abominator, and you, you're in a state of shock. It's like the yuck factor. You gag as you read the speech and saying, "Oh my gosh, it's right in your face." Uh, Doctor uh, Bell, I have to admit, I didn't read it. I didn't listen to it. I am so sick of Barack Obama's. Uh, well, we're on the air, but his uh, BS. Uh, yeah. I just can't take it anymore. Uh, well, he well, I, he is such a compulsive liar, and the way to tell whether he's lying is are his lips moving? Uh, right, if they're exactly. moving, he's lying. Uh, Let's go over some of the facts you okay, dug up because sure. it, a lot of stuff we have is scary. But I tell people, reality is only scary if you're willing to do nothing. That means number one, we have to do all we can, and then we have to give the rest to God. We have to realize that we don't rest in God, which is why the Sabbath isn't just a day of the week. It's resting in God every day because he can take the pain away. He can even help us when we're dying, when our finances are depleted, when our family members don't listen to us, when our nation is dying, which it is right now, when our world is dying, which it is right now. God is with us. He's a, he's a force man. Well, fire. And, and, and he has promised, uh, he has said that, uh, you know, when the end time comes, he'll return and he'll make a, a new world uh, or a new earth, not a new world order, but a new earth, a new Jerusalem and a new heaven. And things right. will be not only uh, okay, they will be absolutely perfect. Now, on the eve, uh, virtually, of the, the American Super Bowl game, uh, and it, I, I love it as much as anybody else, and I always go to a party and, and you know, uh, consume vast amounts of food and booze and uh, whoop and holler, and I actually get a bigger kick out of the commercials than I do the game, because essentially it's just a game that's uh, grossly overhyped. But anyway, okay, the uh, director of U.S. National Intelligence, James Clapper, on the the eve of the Super Bowl is saying that U.S. intelligence fears an attack on American soil. Um, and he's blaming uh, Syrian uh, extremists uh, and so forth. Um, okay. Uh, well, first off, the, the America has been deeply involved with all these extremists in, in uh, funding them, controlling them, uh, providing them with arms and so forth. And this uh, Al-Qaeda was always an American uh, invention. Uh, essentially, it was a list of people they could use to fight uh, the Soviets in Afghanistan uh, a couple decades ago. Uh, but who knows? Uh, are it, it, will the Super Bowl being attacked? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. Uh, and I'm not trying to be a fear monger. I'm just trying to say uh, be aware, be alert. And if something happens, either there or with some, uh, someplace else, don't automatically accept the official line that the mainstream media, which is uh, six corporations uh, owned by the globalists, run totally by Zionists, uh, don't accept what they tell you. Uh, we've seen it with 911. They lied through their teeth. They, they, they led us around by the nose like little children. And uh, it, it took a few years, but people have, for the majority of people have finally woken up to, and uh, realized that 911 was not uh, the official conspiracy theory that the six foot six Arab guy set in a cave in Afghanistan and uh, changed the laws of physics and uh, direct, uh, had the U.S. Air Force stand down, et cetera, et cetera. But that was all Hollywood fantasy. And well, uh, we have, have to, to understand, <coughs> Tim Osmond, by the way, otherwise known as uh, Osama, 
actually uh, was actually a second uh, backup in the trilogy of the rings because his actual name is Voldemort. So in other words, he's a wizard. He can actually make the laws of physics change, cause buildings to deteriorate as if they're hit with nuclear weapons, which they were, uh, cause 3,000 Americans to die, but by the way, there should have been 33,000 in the mall and in the buildings, but a lot of them got advanced notes like Odigo, which is an Israeli uh, intelligence company, and a lot of the gold was removed from the Bank of Nova Scotia, which is one of the towers. But all those things happen, by the way, including the assertion of artificial icons in the computer screens, all by design. And then, of course, they blamed it on weapons of mass destruction. But we had dancing Israelis videotaping it for media back in Israel. No, yeah. this wasn't a conspiracy theory. This is a conspiracy fact. And the fact is that we're being now walked, death marched, walked into another disaster. It may be like the marathon bombing. I've been looking for years because back in 97, I spent an entire week with Delta Force at an environmental meeting for the Academy of Environmental Medicine in St. Louis. And I worked with these guys before because I had security clearance. And I can tell you, they spent a good part of the time talking about different terrorism scenarios that they were actually working on, uh, on responses to. And by that time, 97, they'd already been doing it for 30 years plus. And uh, the primary one was nukes going off in U.S. cities in the city core or meeting major sporting events. So this has been war-gamed out ad nauseum. And the fact that the Mr. Clapper, good name for him for the director, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, it's like he's got some form of, uh, of what I call terrorism clap. How's that? The clap, which, used to clap, which, is, which is gonorrhea, right? He's got a terroristic version of, of, of intellectual clapperism. And so anyway, <clears throat> so... So uh, and he's telling us, be fearful, don't go to the Super Bowl, because we, they might blow it up. Well, let me tell you, they put an aircraft or helicopter over every city. They couldn't get a kilogram of scintillating material into any city or stadium unless the government wants it there. Bad so if something try. bad happens, and I'm telling you in advance, if something <laughs> happens, in advance you need to know the government and, and obscene dark elements within the government did it. And there's other elements in the government that are freaked out by it, including many of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, many in our intelligence community, they know that there's dark, rogue elements, and they're operating inside well, their body, almost I, like, I a, will even like a parasite. Go so far, <laughs> I will even go so far as to give Obama uh, and his administration a little bit of credit, and it almost gags me to say that, but they have somewhat sided on the side of not going to war against Iran, and uh, because I think enough people woke up and said, hold it. Uh, we can't play golf anymore. We have to yeah, go live uh, in a bunker. Uh, we're going to blow up the world. Why? I think I think it's even simpler than that. I think we, what we have is a late night TV host who has been contracted to operate as president. He was a sock puppet for George Boros. Uh, sorry, so George has to get one of those long latex gloves on and insert his hand rectally to Obama in order to tell him what to do. And what we have now is a situation but sometimes where even puppets uh, revolt, you know. Well, no, the puppets are revolting. Yeah. He wants he, Obama above all things is narcissistic. He wants to be liked, and when he thinks people don't like him, which is why he watches ESPN in the blue room behind the Oval Office, and he watches the blogs to find out who likes and doesn't like him. It it irks him. It drives. It literally burns his soul that people don't worship him. So he wants to be like. So when he does his uh, inauguration Bill Clinton, speech, Bill, Bill Clinton was very much like that. I, I, I yeah. told you privately. I when I met him one time uh, in a receiving line, and everybody is beaming. This is when he was first running for president. He was he came right. to my hometown, Evan. So everyone is beaming, but I'm not because you know I kind of have this look on my face. I'm about to shake hands with this this thing, you know. And and when he got to me, he saw I wasn't beaming, and his whole expression immediately changed. And he shook my hand, and then went the next person, and he was beaming again, and they were beaming. And he was he was drawing from that. And the fact that I wasn't uh, uh, an acolyte that was all lit up in the face because of his presence really, really hurt him. You know, you can yeah, tell. Yeah. I mean, he... Yeah. Uh, well, he and remember now, it's not just Bill Clinton. Remember, he's a man of clay and iron. His human flesh has been avatared by demonic transdimensional entities that their negative force has been sucked dry when they look at someone who looks in the evil and the fact that we have a human being avatared by a demonic entity. That's what we have. And Hillary Clinton, by the way, is orders of magnitude worse than all of them. God help us if she gets in in 2016. We think, we think Obama's bad. Do you watch for Hillary? Ooh, I call
welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. Uh, Tim, we have a few more stories to, to, to open up uh, this can of worms in terms of what's going on. And uh, I think people should understand that what's happening in our culture, especially after this speech last year by Obama, he's opened up the can of worms. And we see right across the nation, even in states like Utah and other states that have got laws, uh, Obama plans on destroying the Defense of Marriage Act. He's trying to, quote, get equal, uh, equality in marriage. Well, a man and a man or a woman and a woman is not marriage. Uh, you know, they can talk about benefits sharing. No, and but we are values. having that crammed down our throat. And, you know, I am like most people. I, you know, if, if you're gay, that's your problem. Uh, and I consider it a yeah. problem, but that's your problem. That's your business. Leave the little kitties alone and don't rub my face in it and don't scream that you want to be married and I have to recognize you as husband and husband and wife and wife and you should be able to adopt kids and, and, and body, body, body on nauseam. You're, as right. far as I'm concerned, you, you have a, a psychological and a spiritual illness, and I don't want to hear it, and I don't want it in my face. And, uh, you know, uh, this leave me alone and I'll leave you alone. And I think that's right. how most people feel about it. And well, well, what, happened, what it's like in, in socialist countries like Canada is if, if I said these things, and we have Canadians listening right now, if I said these things on a local radio station, I've been warned when I spoke in the radio in Eastern Canada or in Ontario or when I went to the Institute Day Ministry, they warned me that if I say them in live radio in a studio in a Canadian province, I'm going to prison for saying any of the things I've said on this program today. So people need to understand Canada is not a free country, neither is Australia, New Zealand, Britain, or Europe. If you say these things in Europe, including about the real issues of what happened with the Holocaust, good and bad, or the real cause of it with the Sabbatean Satanist, or the fact that the Nazis were had tied directly to the state of Israel, to the creation of the state, people don't want to hear this. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear the truth about the fact that many of the churches could be fixed up because God's judgment starts on the church. And some of them are pretty screwed up. As I said last week on Rents Network Show as a guest, I said, you know, every religion on earth, including atheism, agnosticism, and transhumanism, are all just Walmart different versions of Satanism. And it doesn't mean that every church is bad. It means it's infiltrated, and people could easily expunge it. For example, one of the first questions I ask if I'm coming to speak at a church is, does your deacon's board allow burials of masons in your church? Do you have a public uh, outcry against abortion and eugenics and euthanasia against Obamacare? Do you have a specific discussion of geopolitical issues where particular political candidates can be rated by Christian standards so you can decide in your church who you want to support? I mean, I don't hear these things, but the church should be an antiseptic against this kind of evil. Instead, Obama wants to make sure that these issues are off limits, that Christians really don't have any say anymore in so-called the Defense of Marriage Act or protecting your children against some of the rulings like here in the state of California where uh, if you're a transgender you can go to a female washroom even though you're a six foot five male expecting to tell them that somewhere down the road you're going to do a sex change and you can go to the girls washroom this is not right you know, I, 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 as a physician what I'm seeing here is evil shrouded in the idea of equality it's not well uh, you, you know uh, men and women uh, are equal uh, as as children of God but we are different thank goodness uh, and it, it is uh, a lie to to want to ignore gender differences I mean, it, it, that's God made yeah, that, it that's, different. A, that's different men and women are different but when we start gender for example what they're saying in Holland is that that we, we don't have just two or even three sex, like male, female, and, you know, LGBT, right? Gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender. They don't think that's enough. They want to make literally dozens of sub, if you want to call it, genders. Well, they're sick. I'm sorry. It's demonic yeah. and it's sick. And I will continue to say that. And, it, I, and you know, if they want to throw me in jail, I guess they can. But good right. luck. And they also want to start, uh, they want to start to take, one of the part of the reason why, and I mentioned this over and over again, they don't want to fix Fukushima, is they want to have so many birth defects that people, one in ten babies or more, will be so deformed by uh, the effect of Fukushima and GMO foods and electrotoxins that they will wipe out the pro-life movement 
and that pro-lifers will say, I don't want to have a monster, so I'm going to do, you know, uh, a, you know, polar body exclusion. I'm going to do all kinds of advanced genetic testing. If the baby's a monster, the latest case is this woman that was killed uh, in Texas where they took her off life support, and I'm going to clearly cut this issue up, okay? The first issue is, number one, they should have put her on life support and piper alimentation, which would have made her not start decaying. They would have, she's brain dead, she's dead, but her body's still alive and she's supporting a fetus and the fetus gets big enough because she's properly nutrition, but she wasn't, so the doctors were negligent. And then on the other hand, what they did is they decided that the, that the relatives wanted to disconnect her because she was decaying, that's because of inadequate medical care, and they killed not only the mother who was dead, you know, medically dead, but they killed the fetus. So in other words, to say the fetus, because they had hydrocephalus, not talking about the idea that they could do surgery to fix the ventricle and the baby probably wouldn't even have a scar tissue. They malnourished the mother first and then they killed both thinking it was justified because the baby had a birth defect. This is the edge of the wedge. This is what these monsters want to do so that five or ten years from now with Fukushima still boiling lots of radioisotopes and most people frightened to have a child. Like that movie, you know, the, day, you know, the Children of Men about a, a decade ago where the British actor was literally dealing with the, with the fact that the uh, youngest person ever born just died and the whole world grieved over it. The fact is that the globalists want re human reproduction, wild reproduction to stop. They want total control. They want, if gay and lesbians, and it was decided over a decade ago in Israel, that a gay couple could use genetic engineering to create a clone of themselves and pass on their assets uh, to their their child is a genetic clone of themselves. Well, but you so know, all is, that is a slap in the face of God himself. Right. You know? then, by the way, this this is a degradation of the human race, and we're not going to see a population explosion. We're seeing a population implosion. We're going to see an IQ implosion, a lifespan implosion. We're going to see the human race decay to a point where basically the average person will be an imbecile. The average person will have a very degraded lifestyle. And, and why is and it, that? Because Satan is pulling the strings of these people, and they're pulling the strings of the bought and paid for politicians in Congress, in the White House, in parliaments yeah, around the world. And but, Satan is hate. He is death. He is evil. He's the opposite of light. He's the opposite of life. He's the opposite of good. He's the opposite of God. And uh, he, you know, he, he is literally the world's most pathetic loser, the universe's most pathetic loser. And his minions are working and working very hard day in and day out now. We are in the end time. And if you can't see it, well, you, you have an iron trap uh, door shut on your mind because it's all around you everywhere you look. And God help us, but we're going to get through it. And when Christ returns, everything will be made perfect. Yeah, but the main thing is we, number one, have to speak the truth in power and love. And number two, we have to show love to the people that are doing evil, but we don't have to accept their evil. We have to show that. Exactly. Yeah, and we have to also be ready to, to, to stand up and say, you know, things like Fukushima should teach us a lesson that nuclear uh, power and nuclear weapons need to be the end. It should need, they all need to end now. We need to stop letting the manipulation of prevention of alternative energy that are energy from the vacuum, uh, hydrofracking that's safe, all kinds of other things, and stop the lies of eco terrorism by people like Igor, Al Gore, his latest scam-tastic <laughs> schemes. Read the blog bless, again, we'll have the link up. Your business with one S up. Approaching a Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. I just uh, heard uh, the interview with Yuichi Shimatsu the other day, uh, who's mentioned a very interesting fact that the American government's now requesting where the Japanese actually put 330 kilograms plus, uh, and it's probably more than that, of high-grade, weapons-grade plutonium they sent back 30 years ago. The fact is that the Fukushima Daiichi plant was a nuclear weapons plant. It turns out it was intercepted by the Israelis, and they split the shipment of plutonium detonator uh, material. Much of it was sent on to Japan. There's been also a collaboration with the Japanese in obtaining much more high-grade plutonium for nuclear weapons in the Middle East, which means Israel has a lot more material than was sent originally from Amarillo, Texas nuclear facility, breeder reactor, back in the 70s to the uh, Japanese. The Japanese have been building nuclear weapons for ages. Now, of course, we have proof that not only the ocean's dying from things like corium, uh, 
the decorium disruption, uh, but also from the isotopes of plutonium and so on. Something going back to the time not only of the Manhattan Project and the explosions at the Bikini Atoll, but before that. In fact, the Japanese and Germans were collaborating on nuclear technology and centrifuge technology back uh, in the 1930s. And the first nuclear explosion done by America on a Japanese uh, frigate, an old ship in the uh, area of the South Pacific Ocean, was actually in the late 1930s, not 1940s with the Manhattan Project. So people don't understand that the Japanese and Germans were collaborating on these projects with uh, the uh, Oak Ridge National Lab and the Chicago Research Facilities for Nuclear Enrichment, and we had some of the keys for the nuclear fusion technology, but the Russian, but the Germans signed part of their deal, which is collaborated through the uh, Pope to set up the uh, pa Operation Paperclip and the transfer of over 100,000 technicians and scientists and others, including intelligence agents, uh, to America and other countries, and the movement of Eva Braun and Adolf Hitler to Argentina. So they died many years later. This is part of the scheme. The fact is we have technology that monitors nuclear material every week over every city in the United States with helicopters and jets that can actually see scintillating materials. And uh, Chris, you mentioned a new technology that most people aren't aware of called muon imaging. Well, I'm familiar with uh, classified access to information called torsion field imaging that can identify up to 440 milliliters below ground, not only the molecular structure, the molecular identity, but the actual shape and structure, whether it's wood, steel, glass, underground, and actually tell you if they have a specific material, whether it's, let's say, plutonium or uranium or other material, so they can actually build an image of what is underground. So they know all the materials of every mine and every you know, unusual type of metal or material, and underground facilities uh, the fact is, if the nuclear bomb blows off in, in a key event like the Super Bowl or a city, which I've been told many times by Delta Force and other special ops that they are doing war games going back over 40 plus years, uh, we should not be surprised at the fact that they're letting Fukushima happen because they're going to destroy human re reproductive biology, so they want to control it. But they also want to make sure that the next level of terrorism is probably going to be nuclear. The next major thing will be the center of a core of a city or a major sporting event like the Super Bowl, just like Super Bowl Steve mentioned a few years ago. And I can't, I'm not going to say prophetically that it's going to be this one, but it certainly will turn people's stomachs if all of a sudden a nuclear bomb goes off and a lot of people die. And it'll bring a state of fear where basically people will hand over their, their, their security and safety to a cabal of evil maniacs that want to take the last shred of our freedom to travel without showing your papers, please, and having biometric authentication. So, Tim, tell us more about this. What's what's going on? I mean, yeah, well, I mean, you, Chris, Chris, I mean, yeah, go ahead and tell us more. Okay, this, okay. this image, this imaging stuff you talked about, this with muons. Tell tell, tell us about it and how did you obtain the information? Uh, I suppose the, the technology that you're discussing uh, might have some military applications and so it's, maybe they have it, they just don't disclose it as freely as Yeah, it, it's, it's immediate. It's not like the I muons take a time for you to build a muon image up, like a half an hour if you have it focused over a specific area. More. And you can do it from space because you're looking at a muon shadow, whereas the uh, torsion field imaging is instantaneous. So you could tell where the nuclear missiles are and where they're even being launched in the a higher troposphere and whether it's starting to go into re-entry phase and separating out into warheads. So uh, the fact is we know exactly where all the nuclear material is, where the nuclear bombs are. If there's a dirty bomb in a city or crossing a entry point on a uh, container ship or across a border from Mexico through, through uh, you know, uh, the Mexico entry points or through San Diego, uh, there's no excuse for us saying a nuclear event could happen. And in fact, two years ago when I had my contacts in Los Angeles, that we averted a nuclear weapon going off in a major complex in southern Los Angeles just two years ago. So the fact is that uh, we have good people in our government stopping things, and we have bad people trying to create disasters. Well, this image is going to take about a month, a month to generate, you know, or to develop. But it is a month. It takes a month. I mean, it actually takes a month to develop, to develop an image with a yeah. with a muon. <laughs> oh wow, that's that's too yeah. slow. Well, that's like that's that's glacially slow. That's. <laughs> 
That's like taking a picture a month after the Olympics is closed and everybody's right, well, finished. Well, let's go, let's go, let's go talk about some, some of the high points of it, though, is that this is from Bizorg, which is a, this is a, uh, a well-respected uh, physics uh, uh, website. <clears throat> it's a journal like quality, Stuart, and peer review. And so when I came across that, you know, lo and behold, we've been talking about the fire wild. They've got to locate the corium, you know, and I know Brooks said that. you got to yeah, know where it is so that you know uh, what to do. So this is a step in some direction. Well, the, the, the aquarium location, the three steps I would recommend they do is, number one, they could do ground-penetrating ultrasound or infrasound mm -hmm. imaging. They could do what's called ground-penetrating radar, GPR. And the third level is this muton, muon shadow or the classified torsion field imaging, which is much more accurate because it can even be done by space. The, the problem is they don't want to know where the aquarium is because they want it to actually meet that aquifer. They want it to poison the oceans because there's been no action whatsoever, even on the simplest steps, to stop this radiation from poisoning the oceans, causing a massive plume of radiation that moves along the coast north and south along Japan, and poisoning the population of Tokyo and all the other major cities south of Tokyo, because when it hits this, what's called a shore effect, it moves the radiation north and south along the shoreline, all the way along the east coast of, of Japan. <clears throat> and the amount of radiation released in becquerels, because a becquerel is one decay per second, the amount of becquerels of radiation being released are in the quadrillions of becquerels per cubic meter of water in, in some of the concentrated water that's been stored on site and they've never filtered out uh, and separated out strontium uh, or cesium, they've only filtered out some of the isotopes uh, so these isotopes are going directly in the Pacific Ocean, that's why these longer acting bioaccumulating isotopes are now at the thousand plus day mark and we're now seeing massive increases in the ocean that are going to cause horrible effects. In young teenagers, for example, cesium will cause congestive heart failure because it causes cardiomyocyte death because it's an analog of magnesium and potassium. Uh, so what we're going to start seeing is a sea of death. We're going to start seeing people drop dead of, of unusual illnesses and unusual age periods with no pre-existing conditions. We're going to see people that have ha haphazard lifestyle eating sushi or rice or other materials from Japan which they're, by the way, donating to third world countries that reject it. And I see uh, this year the Japanese economy crashing, which is why they're getting so militaristic in their attitude toward China. Uh, and right now Japan's military is extremely strong. If there was a conflict that arose now between China and Japan, Japan would smash China flatter than a pancake in a half an hour. And people need to understand that. The Japanese have not got rid of their imperial intentions and they worked lockstep for 70 years with America developing these weapons even before the Second World War. Well, let, let me give so, you some, uh, some of our noodling as, as we will be coming up with the conclusions we're reaching about the cesium that's being detected in the ocean. And what that means is to, uh, as I said, we have some, some friends of mine put, put our heads together on this. It means that that cesium is not, that water is not going through the filtration system. It's, and it's not really going into the sand around the plant. It's almost exactly. like direct runoff. And the reason why we can say that is if it were bubbling through the aquifer and, and, and forcing its way through the, you know, the soil, the cesium does get plated out into the soil. It would have collected on. It would have glommed right onto the uh, soil. Keep that side, we'll be Welcome back. And a year ago, um, Dr. Helen Caldicott had one of the scientists describe how bad cesium is. And if you take uh, two grams of cesium, it's sufficient to cause basically permanent zone of absolute death and destruction to all life forms in, say, the, uh, the Central Park in New York. Two grams. Uh, that's a very tiny amount. What we're talking about here is thousands of tons of radioisotopes and many, many, many hundreds of kilograms of cesium the 137, and that doesn't include strontium-90, plutonium, americium, all kinds of other nasty isotopes that have been released. Many of them have extremely long half-lives, and it's the longer-acting ones that bioaccumulate that are the most nasty. Uh, it tends to be that strontium will tend to accumulate on the surface because of the way its chemical properties are, and the fact it gets uptake very quickly is an analog of calcium. So it tends to go to the bones and the bone marrow. Cesium goes to the muscles, cardiac muscle, and to the 
heart muscle very quickly. So it can precipitate vascular disease and heart failure, and it goes to the nerves as well. So the pericardium of the nerve can't control abnormal uh, action potentials and seizure activity. So uh, these are very nasty isotopes. What we're facing is that this year, we're probably going to have a collapse of the biosphere in the Pacific. We're probably going to have an evacuation of the Japanese population when they finally lose control and either the cooling pool falls over or we just have a major burp of radiation or underground nuclear explosions, uh, which I call, I call them burps because it doesn't mean it's over. If you've got bad gas, it doesn't pass because you burp once. And uh, what's likely to happen is this is continually going to slam up against the coast of the western coast of Canada and the United States probably more severe, severely in the northern U.S. states like Washington State and British Columbia, but we already see evidence of the death of the wildlife. The salmon run is now 80% reduced, and the sardines are gone. None. There's none. Okay, not one. N nil. Nada. We have to understand that the government is purposely hiding it, and even Dr. Kai Vetter, and I mentioned that he, we're going to vet Kai Vetter, that he has stopped a year and a half ago after I kind of pursued him, and others to try to do more data and encourage more universities to actually stop producing any data on food, water, or air sampling, which they were doing a good job. And uh, they also brought up this false study where Dr. Kai Vetter already pronounced that the results of the study, even before he gets his first sample from 18 different universities, sampled between now over the next 12 months, mean nothing, don't worry, be happy, as I mentioned Bobby McFerrin's song, don't worry, be happy, if you worry about it, it doubles your trouble. Uh, so, Chris, where where is this all going? Because I want to put insert new data here. The new data is that America now is coming out of the closet and saying, yeah, we gave you Japanese 330-plus kilograms of high-grade plutonium. Where is it? I mean, why would they say that publicly now? I don't understand. It doesn't make sense to me at all. Why have the Americans not gone in there now that they know that many of the people in the Reagan, now they apparently decontaminated and they're going to resurface it, but... They had to spend a lot of money <clears throat> ripping out pretty well everything out of that ship, which is a cost of billions of dollars. Much of the crew is going to die. Their bodies are being ripped apart by bioaccumulation of going through several plumes of highly concentrated radioisotopes. And uh, I know how to rescue some of these people, by the way. And so if they contact me, I'll give them my rescue protocol to help rescue them to get their stem cells regenerating. But it's not an easy process. It's a very involved process involving everything from, from stem cell therapy, hyperbaric oxygen, pulsed energetic light therapy, and, and in magnetic field therapy, specific nutraceuticals to stimulate our mitochondrial function because radiation's primary target is your mitochondria, number one, and your ion channels, number two. Uh, if you damage your mitochondria, you damage your ion channels, you're, uh, as they say in the Navy or the military, you're screwed and tattooed. And it's a long way back. Uh, so... Chris, what can you say about what you've discovered since the, this new revelation about muon imaging and about this new release uh, that the U.S. government is asking the Japanese, where is the high-grade plutonium we gave you? So, let, let me just uh, just say, you know, I, I don't want to be the purveyor of even worse news, but, you know, we've always talked to some of my, some of my colleagues, and uh, they said indicative of the amount of cesium that's being discovered in the surrounding oceans and all, it means that there is little bubbling of any runoff from inside the plant, radioactive runoff going through the soil. Otherwise, a lot of that cesium would have been grabbed by the, by the soil particles. And instead, it's going, it's found the pathway to go directly, uh, it formed the channel and it's going straight through the sea without any uh, filtration at all, even, even that offered by sand or or anything else, because cesium would, would a lot of that would get plated out, you know, be left behind. So that's, a, that's some bad news right there, because, um, well, you know, we don't even know where that, where that channel is, or those channels are, but, you know, just today there was the NHK uh, article that had some video on it that showed Unit 1, uh, they put a boat down in the bottom of the tourist room, and they sent it around, and lo and behold, there is water just pouring out of the containment vessel uh, yeah. that they so, mapped So out let's, go, let's go through a checklist, uh, Chris. Reactor number one, two, and three are impossible for a human being to go in there because of the gamma ray uh, levels of radiation and the neutron flux. 
that within minutes they'll be drooling and incompetent with an hour they're dead. Number two, they have not made any attempt to make either cabled robots or using depleted uranium shielding against gammas or gamma rays or neutrons, make robots that can actually go in there and move the debris and actually start fixing things up. Uh, number three, we have cooling pool four where they remove what is 150 plus almost 200 fuel rod assemblies, but they're going to start getting into the hard ones, which the analogy from the uh, one of the interviews in TEPCO was that it's analogous to removing cigarettes from a pack that are all lit. So it means that basically it's going to go on fire. Uh, then we have the subsidence, which is now over 30 uh, inches, apparently, of the cooling pool, which is already tilting uh, over. So it's going to fall if there's an earthquake there, level 7 or higher. We have the, no one knows where these, what we call steam jets, that are created by the tritiated, uh, superheated steam that's actually tunneling under the seafloor uh, or tunneling back toward the land, where cracks in the land that can carry it all the way to Tokyo. So we're in a situation now where they don't know where the corium is. They haven't stopped the release of venting directly into the air. They don't filter out the higher isotopes like plutonium, strontium, cesium. Uh, there's no action uh, to actually stop this. They're going to put a, apparently a wall of ice in the ground to try to re-divert the water. What they need is something much more physical to make sure the water doesn't get anywhere near from that aquifer, the uh, air, that whole area. They need to be a seawall on the other side of Fukushima Daiichi plant where that water is concentrated and they can turn it into solid waste. They need a corium catcher underneath it to have depleted uranium containers. They need to have Kevlar spider silk tents over each reactor so they can literally filter out that material out of the air so it's venting periodically and burping large amounts of radiation. And uh, they need to stop the idea that moving radiation isotopes from a broken reactor site is smart. They need to convert it like they did with Chernobyl, a graph, a, basically a graphite reactor, into a crystalline sarcophagus. So this idea of trying to remove things that are going to blow up if you move them is stupid. It's like going in an old western and sending in an idiot to try to remove a slit stick of dynamite. And the short fuse is already going to get real close. So before he even gets it out of the back of the truck wagon, it's going to blow him up. And that's what I see happening here. This is going to blow this year, and when it does, the burst of radiation is going to cause acute radiation sickness. Already you see blocking highs in the Pacific Ocean, blocking any storms coming from Kamchatka in Japan and the North Pacific coming to the United States. They're allowing a storm to come in. I spoke to Jeff Rance this morning about that and yesterday, and the fact is that blocking, that blocking high was let, allowed this storm front to come in across to Oregon and Northern California because it's from an area from the South Pacific Ocean and they're going to allow that rain in. And I'm going to be watching my radiation detector. I will guarantee that the only rain that's going to be allowed in here will be from the South Pacific weather systems because they know if Americans see sea life dying like crazy on the coast or people start getting acute sickness, they're going to freak out. Your comments. Yeah, you, you definitely... Uh put out a whole array of different types of failures that would uh, definitely uh, result in a pretty enormous release. I guess a few I would have to add is a gas drop accident in year four, thus puncturing the, the floor of the uh, of the uh, unit four suspend fuel pool and draining it. That's a possibility, too. Uh, yeah, you mentioned that before, uh, either a seal break or just the yeah. subsidence and the actual pool falling over and twisting and releasing the floor. And yeah, that's just one more, one more way for this to become out of control completely. I mean, if you're betting on it and you're a betting man in Las Vegas and you put money on Fukushima going down, you're going to make a lot of money. That's this right. is going to be a disaster of disasters this year. See Japan collapse. See America go to a form of radiological martial law. See the combination of that and the flu doubling every three or four days. See the bond market run that will occur after Japan's collapse. All of these things are going to happen this year. This year. If you've been given a warning, get prepared. God help us. Pray. Take action. <laughs>